Boma Jiwa, is that right? <laughs> okay, now that I've exhausted my complete Romanian vocabulary, I'm going to speak in English. Imagine you're flying into New York City and you look out the window of your airplane and you see JFK Airport. That was financed with guaranteed bonds. You see power lines in the distance. Those power lines and the power plant were financed with guaranteed bonds. You see Westchester County, Manhattanville College. It was financed with guaranteed bonds. <clears throat> you see Long Island and the Delphi College. It was, guaranteed, it was financed with guaranteed bonds. If you were Superman and you could look under the ground and you saw the water and sewer uh, uh, systems under the ground, those are financed by guaranteed bonds. This is the biggest industry that you've never heard of. Uh, since its inception in the 1970s, the financial guarantee insurance industry has issued six trillion dollars worth of guarantees and has financed about four trillion dollars worth of uh, infrastructure in the United States and another trillion dollars uh, around the world, including $43 billion in the emerging markets. So I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, how this might be a benefit in Romania. And I need a little help with what I do here. What, what did you do? Oh, you just pressed this one. Oh, this one. Okay, thanks. So this morning I heard uh, talk about a fund and I think one thing I'd like to start with is to suggest to you that you not have a fund. A fund is the wrong vehicle, in my opinion. If you had a 300 million euro fund, or about 1.2 billion lei, you could pay for maybe a good-sized toll road, or maybe two or three solar plants, and then you'd be out of money. But if you took that same 300 million euros, or 1.2 billion lei, you could, over a period of five years, if it were invested in a financial institution called a financial guarantee insurance company, you could do, over five years, approximately $1.8 billion of financing uh, at a six-time operating leverage uh, ratio, which would be about average, I think, for a single country guarantor, Andre. And, uh, but five years is a short life for a company like this. A, a company like this could be in existence for 20 years, 100 years, or even a millennium. In fact, uh, it technically could be in, in existence perpetually and technically could have infinite operating leverage and could finance infrastructure forever in Romania. Uh, a guarantor can employ a prudent amount of operating leverage. What I mean by that is that for every layer of capital, it can do approximately four to eight lei of uh, infrastructure financing uh, as a single country guarantor. I ran one of these companies between 1999 and 2004. It was a global company, and it was before the global financial crisis. Because it was global, and it was because it was before the global financial crisis, it was able to operate at a much greater level of operating leverage. This company was capitalized at $600 million, and when I left five and a half years later, it had guaranteed $60 billion worth of transactions with zero losses. This is not unusual in the industry, and you, can, you can't have that same kind of impact in Romania, but you can have considerable impact with a company like this. I'm sorry, I, oh, I found it, I found it, I think I did. Here we go. So uh, what is a term of art here is monoline, and why is it called a monoline? Because these are insurance, financial insurance companies that only do one kind of insurance, financial guarantees. They don't do auto insurance, they don't do life insurance, they don't do anything except one type of insurance. And that insurance is an unconditional, irrevocable guarantee on principle and interest on a financial obligation. The financial obligation is usually a bond, but it could also be a bank loan. What I mean about unconditional and irrevocable is if you have an auto loan insurance policy, 
you're probably used to, if you have an accident, calling your insurance company and having the insurance company explain to you that, well, you have a deductible on your policy. So first you have to pay 1,000 euros or something towards the accident. Or maybe uh, your policy wasn't in effect uh, yet and they don't cover that. Or they, they argue with you about whether the, they really cover this kind of accident. In financial guarantee insurance policy, uh, you're not allowed as the insurance company to argue. It doesn't really matter why there was a default. The insurance policy is obligated to pay principal and interest. It can be because uh, the obligor ran out of money, which is usually the reason. It can be because uh, the secretary to the CFO forgot to wire funds to make a payment. It can, it can be because there was an earthquake that obliterated the project. It doesn't really matter. For whatever reason, a payment is not made. The insurance company is obligated to make the payment. And that gives enormous confidence to the bondholder to buy the bond. And it therefore raises the rating that a bond might otherwise have. If you had a single country financial guarantee insurance company here in Romania, your target rating what you want to have as a rating should be equivalent to the triple B minus, which is the, um, the rating of Romania in the global scale, or a triple A national scale rating for LEU denominated uh, bond, bond issues. To have a company like this, you need very, very disciplined, rigorous risk management. I mentioned that the company that I managed uh, did $60 billion of guarantees without a single loss. This is not unusual in the industry. This is how uh, you have to manage these companies. If you want to be successful, you have what's called a zero loss underwriting standard. It doesn't mean that you never experience a loss. It means that you underwrite on the expectation that you'll never have a loss, and you manage as if you'll never have a loss. Once in a while, a small loss may occur, uh, because human beings are human beings and things happen, but you, you work towards that goal. And one of the aspects of this business is that because a bond is guaranteed, it doesn't matter too much whether the underlying obligation is a toll road or a solar plant or water and sewer bond or whatever the infrastructure project may be. Once it's guaranteed by your Romanian guarantee company, it becomes a bit of a commodity. And that means it's more easily tradable. Most bonds are not uh, very actively traded on the secondary market. But once they're guaranteed, they become more commoditized and more able uh, to be traded on the secondary market. And as I said, uh, this product has very high development impact because of the leverage inherent in the financial model. This, this product, as I said, was uh, begun in 1972 in the United States uh, by a, an investment banker who observed that uh, triple B-rated bonds had very low default history and that there, there wasn't any real reason why the price of a triple B-rated bond should be so much higher than a triple A-rated bond. And uh, so it started in the municipal bond market, which is the, the principal way infrastructure has historically been financed in the United States. Only recently have, have PFI, PPP type of structures been introduced in that country. In the 1990s, uh, this industry expanded into structured finance, uh, which was initially uh, very successful, mortgage-backed securities and asset-backed securities, but later, uh, it expanded uh, fatefully into collateralized debt obligations, and unfortunately, the industry destroyed itself in the subprime crisis in the United States uh, in 2007 and 8. But it also expanded internationally. Uh, beginning in 1990, uh, around 1990, it started doing deals in, in Western Europe and France and the UK. And in 1994, it did its first deal in the emerging markets in Mexico, and between 1994 and 2020, uh, the industry did $42 billion of emerging markets transactions with a remarkable record of only nine basis points of cumulative loss. That's 0.09% of cumulative loss in the emerging markets. Now, how can that happen? We, we all know, we pick up the newspaper, 
And there's problems in Argentina, where I was born and raised, constantly. There's problems in Turkey. There was a Russia crisis in 1998, the tequila crisis of 1994. Uh, there's constant crises in the emerging markets. They happen all the time. How did the uh, monoline industry manage to have such low losses? There's a, n a number of reasons, but the principal reason, in my opinion, was their policy of currency matching, meaning if a guarantor was going to guarantee, for example, a toll road in Chile that collected Chilean peso revenues, then the debt had to be in Chilean pesos and the guarantee had to be in Chilean pesos. A lot of emerging markets infrastructure is financed on a cross-border basis. A lot of toll roads in, in emerging market countries are financed with dollar loans. The monolines never guaranteed an unmatched currency transaction. They never guaranteed a dollar loan on a peso generating asset. If there was a dollar generating asset, like an international uh, airport that generated dollar revenues, then they would have a dollar loan. And this uh, currency matching policy that the monolines uh, followed meant that there was almost never a default on their, uh, on their, on their projects. It also meant that when a project got in trouble, the exposure that the dollar balance sheet of the monoline had to that project declined. Let me explain that. So let's say you have a toll road in a country like Brazil, and it's in reais, and the traffic is falling. Why is the traffic falling in Brazil? Because the economy is going south. What happens in an emerging markets country when the economy is going south? the currency drops in value. What happens if you have a dollar balance sheet and the local currency is dropping in value? Your exposure to that credit goes down as well. So this is a, for the guarantor, this is a, a good correction that you uh, face. And so that's another contributor to why these companies had such low losses in the emerging markets. Our history, as I said, we were, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself here. Let me go forward. Uh, here's a, a chart showing uh, the loss history between a 15-year period from 1989 to 2004. And you can see basically that on average, uh, in each year, there was like one, one and a half basis points of loss. This is a very, very low loss business if it's managed correctly. How do you make it, how do you manage it correctly? The, the most important single aspect of managing one of these companies is to focus on essentiality. Let me give you an example. You're approached to guarantee bonds for the airport at Cluj. Is that the name of the city? No, Brichot. Okay, Brichot. Cluj does have an airport. All right, at Brichot. And so that would be an essential facility. Brichot needs air traffic, and uh, that would be a kind of project you would do. But separately, uh, your approach to guarantee the hotel on site at the airport, separately from the airport, you would not do that. Because there's a hotel <coughs> off site, there's a bunch of hotels off site. It is not an essential facility. There's competition for that facility. It's very unlikely there's going to be two airports in Brachot, but it's very likely there's going to be many hotels. You focus only on essential assets, and if you focus on that, even if the airport runs into trouble, it's likely to get worked out. If that hotel runs into trouble, it's likely to go bankrupt and you're likely to have a loss. That's the single most important aspect of running a successful guarantor. You also restrict the asset classes you do. So infrastructure is the principal one. Municipal bonds are sub-sovereign governments. Utilities are the only corporate uh, asset that monolines do because they provide an essential public service. You could have a terrific AAA beer company, but a, another beer company could put it out of business. So you don't do corporates other than essential public service utilities. You can do securitizations. In my opinion, you should restrict yourself to essential assets to the underlying obligor. That means housing and personal transportation like auto loans. I wouldn't do other types of securitizations. That's why our industry got into trouble in the global financial crisis. And then there's a specialized product 
you can support your export industry, industries like uh, you mentioned wood is a big export industry in Romania, uh, and you can support your bank system through the remittances, either the retail remittances of Romanians uh, sending money home or your commercial remittances uh, are also a successful uh, proven uh, monoline product. I, I would not deviate from these five products. You should underwrite uh, the risk very rigorously, and this is very difficult for a single country guarantor, but really you need to avoid political influence. Please uh, approve this project in my home city because it's really important to me. You really need to try to avoid that in running a uh, successful company. Every credit needs to be looked over constantly. The way I came up in the industry is I ran the so-called surveillance and remediation function for the biggest company in the industry called MBIA. So once you approve a deal, every six months or so you need to be reviewing that it's still performing. And if it isn't performing well, you intervene and work out the project so that you don't have a loss. And then you are also overseen by two regulators. Uh, the rating agency that accords your rating is looking over you, your work all the time. And you will also be regulated either by the national banking regulator or the national insurance regulator. As I said, uh, this industry unfortunately uh, lost its way. Uh, I, a lot of people say that it's a failed industry. I don't agree with that. It was a very successful industry. It had only three basis points of loss until 2007 and 8. And it didn't fail because it, the business model failed. It failed because the managements abandoned the essentiality principle uh, <laughs> over uh, many years of complacency. And they had too much success and they took their eye off the ball. Um, CDOs of CDOs and these other synthetic uh, transactions that nobody understood were not essential and that's why most of these companies went out of business. We're used to banks failing and nobody says after banks fail, well let's not have banks anymore. But that is what a lot of people said about the financial guarantee industry. Uh, I believe the financial guarantee industry is a good model. Uh, I would suggest that, for example, Malaysia, which has a successful single country guarantor, would be a good model for Romania to uh, think about emulating. As I said, you have to be very disciplined. I tried to give some example of things uh, you would do, physical infrastructure, social infrastructure, uh, colleges, uh, hospitals, prisons, uh, municipal bonds, utilities. Uh, I, I mentioned all of these. You would not do a pure greenfield project. Uh, that's really for banks to do. In other words, the, the construction portion of a, of a project financing. However, if you had a toll road that was operating and collecting revenues and expanding, that partial greenfield, that sometimes that's called a, a green brownfield project, an expansion of an operating road could be done by a, a monoline. You wouldn't do non-essential project. I gave the example of a hotel. Uh, you don't do projects with weak sponsors. You want to look for the large, well-capitalized sponsors. And, uh, you know, I'm an American, so I always end with a commercial. Uh, if, if Romania needs a little bit of help, we'd be happy to help. Uh, Andre and I are, would be interested in working with you. If you, this is a project of interest to the government, uh, we'd be interested in, in working with you. And as I mentioned, uh, we are actually capitalizing global financial assurance as an international firm. One way to support your company, I, I suggested that 300 million euros, 1.2 billion leo would be a good capitalization level. Not all of that money has to come from the Romanian government. Some of it could come from donors like the EBRD, and some of it could be in the form of capital support from companies like ours. So we'd like to work with you if this is a model that makes sense for Romania. Thank you very much for your attention.